Okay. I pulled a bunch of um older well, newer, new being within like the last six months or so bugs. I thought we could talk about them if if no one has any topics that they're interested in sharing. Um, or questions that they have to ask. So I will open it to the floor and then we can look at bugs. I know bugs aren't really exciting, but sometimes they're very helpful. So, so I guess, does anyone have anything they'd like to share or ask questions about? I do have a quick question. Um, we've been getting a lot of requests for um, Chromebook, Hotspot and Launchpad. Uh, circulation reports and I think it's mm -hmm. gotten better but it's I know it kind of depends on how each library catalogs them um, mm -hmm. and I think we found that call number is usually the most consistent um, but I didn't know if anyone had any tips or like a good um, template that they've shared with libraries um, to get that information because yeah sometimes it can get really messy I found so I, I would just say that it definitely depends on how they're cataloged because that sometimes I recommend call numbers, sometimes because of the way we have our shelving locations set up. Sometimes that's the answer. Sometimes it, uh, we have actually, um, sometimes the libraries use the, um, the, the, the CERC mod, you know, it all depends on the cataloging, just like you said, so. If it's not consistent across your libraries, then it's kind of, they almost wind up being one-offs. Right, okay, thank you. I was wanting to make sure I wasn't missing this like glaring on the PS solution, um, but yeah, I'm glad to know that's pretty much, um, yeah, the case everywhere. So I appreciate it. Are they all in the same bib? Some are, some, yeah, oh. most of the, Chromebooks and hotspots are, but launch pads all have their own record. So those are usually like the problem children. <laughs> um, is yeah, and even with yeah, with Chromebook, we did have one where you could just filter on the TCN. Um, so that was nice and clean. Um, but yeah, then as more, you know, devices have been added, it's just caused complications. Mm -hmm. And yeah, usually launch pads for us are the the biggest problem um, because there's really no consistency. Um, except for hopefully there's at least an LAU in the call number. <laughs> um, yeah, I made one report just to test where um, the call number filter was just contains matching substring. Um, but I don't know, again, how like applicable that is everywhere, except for, you know, kind of that circumstance. But um, yeah, so they're all over the place. <laughs> My only other like thing that I've seen libraries do is statistical categories for stuff like that, where they have it all under one like massive all encompassing circ mod or shelf shelving location. And then they use like a stack cat called something like special item types. And then they do like Chromebook or tablet or a bunch pad or things like that. You could try that, but. Okay, yeah, thank you. We do have, um, we had some devices funded. So we have a stat cut for that because we have to track the inventory and CERCs. Um, but yeah, I didn't think about that just in general usage. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to the team about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I love a good stat cat. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I have a, a, if you're looking for CERC on different title records, is it is that, but only, but by library, right? Because we do have, I have a template that I have set up that has circ by, by title record. Uh, if you have multiples, if you're doing that, maybe that something like that might work for you. For those launch bad ones, if they each have individual bib records. Yeah, um, I'm to think. yeah, usually it is um, someone trying to find the numbers per system. Um, and then so some will have 
Actually, I haven't looked at a lot of the launch pad records. I think some have multiple holdings from different libraries. Some just have one. Um, there's just so many in there. Um, but yeah, I would have to look at that further. Great. Um, anyone else? Let me um let me open let me open all the tabs. You might regret that, but okay. Okay, so um, this one is from July 10th. Um, and it looks like a, a reporter should allow for this org and descendants capability. Um, currently, when selecting a list of organizations for reports, um, you have to like click every <laughs> every single one, which you know can be a little cumbersome. Um, and it doesn't allow for like a hard coded thing. So that could be kind of tricky. Um, so they're proposing having the reporter do a descendants function. And I'm wondering if that will be kind of in the new, the new um, angularized. Stephanie, do you know? Give me a moment, let me look. Um... believe that we do have this in the new one. If I'm understanding it correctly. Yeah. And if I'm remembering correctly, what I'm visualizing. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure we've, we've got this in the, the new one. Okay. So um, if you also would like this to make sure you add some heat to it. Yes, let me make a note of this one. I can put the link. That'd be great, thank you. I'm squinting at my tiny little laptop screen. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it. I will double check uh, and um, make a note to comment on that if, if we've got that in there. Okay, because I know some reports won't work if you run it on the system level, and it's kind of a bummer because, like, it would be so much nicer and cleaner to just run it on a system rather than each individual or unit or, you know, selecting them all. So, cool. Um, the next one is from August. Uh, the ability to transfer report folders from one user to another. And I have to say, I wish I had this like literally today. So <laughs> um, it looks like this one's been confirmed. Yes. You know, when a staff member leaves, it would be great to just go bloop, bloop. Here you go. Um, oh, even if the permissions are removed. Put this one in the chat if anybody wants to add heat to it. That's another one I'll check on. I don't think we have that. Okay. That'd be really cool though. Um, and then this one is the one Susan submitted um, in August regarding uh, search ability, excuse me, abilities. Susan, did you want to talk about this one? Sure. Um, so yeah, we have probably, you know, way too many templates. Um, so we do need to do a big uh, cleanup project. Um, but when looking at, um, you know, trying to find the right template to advise staff to run, um, it's really helpful just to go off of the report ID since that's unique. Because um, yeah, some just have so many different little variances in the title. 
Um, so it'd be, and then in the debugging um, information, it'll have the, you know, the report, I think it has the report, or sorry, the template ID in there. Um, so that it's also just helpful, you know, just a quick piece of information that would be helpful to search um, to find it in our big list of shared templates. Mm -hmm. um, and then also I realized that um, we do use some special characters in our report temp or punctuation. So some parentheses or dashes. Um, and I realized that if you do search with those, it does not bring up results. Um, but then yeah, Beth did find that if the clone in parentheses is included, it does show up. So, um, but yeah, otherwise the example I gave there, um, that won't produce any results. But if I just delete the parentheses from that, it'll populate um, with the right report. Okay. Or template. I keep saying report, but I mean template. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it would be, and I think we have a bug for it, being able to see where a report lives. I'll have to check. Um, but like in the search results, seeing like who's, what folder it's into would be really good too. Oh yeah, I think I do remember seeing that and that would be really helpful. Um, yeah, we have way too many paths that get lost. So I have to just look in everyone's individual folder. Yeah, and that becomes kind of fun, <laughs> especially mm -hmm. if they're sharing at different levels. Like we we have the ability to share across all of Spark and then you can share across your system and then across your library. And so like some people have folders on all three levels and that's that's fun. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, where they... I know. Yeah, and I know that can cause issues too, right? If there's a shared folder within an unshared mm -hmm. folder. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I put that one in the chat too. If you want to, uh, anybody wants to uh, track that one as well. Um, most of these are wish list things, so which is great because then we don't have to test anything officially. Um, this is a new one uh, again from August. Um, a reporter source for intra system transits. I'm not sure I understand this one fully, so let me. Sure. Okay. So this one is, uh, Susan, do you, do, yeah, do you not do this one via um, like just the holds transit source or is this something different? This, yeah, I'm trying to think of. I'm trying to wrap my head around this, not including any transits. Oh. I thought it did track transits within a system. Maybe I can ping Chris. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Um, at okay. least he's working on a branch. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not too sure what. Um... So then it wouldn't, you would get only numbers only when it's leaving the system? And not within the system. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Okay. Yeah, that is true too. It's been a while now. I've been out from the league. Yeah. Okay. So maybe that would be helpful. Just so if you were doing like transits from one system to the other, you don't, you, because like you can run all and get all of the transits, but then it, you'd have to like go in and cherry pick mm -hmm. through and, not that that's not fun, but I'm sure not everyone <laughs> is really, yeah, not everyone likes to do that. Like, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. That one makes sense. Um, and then it is a status of new. So, if anyone 
wants to confirm it. I think as long as it's not someone at Pines or is it just not Chris that can confirm it? I'm never quite sure on confirms. I think it's supposed to be somebody not in Pines. Okay. Okay. I think I can confirm it because that would be nice for us as well to see like we, we run it and then we make them do the, the fun little don't look at your own system numbers. So yeah. Okay. I will I can confirm that one later. Um and then this one is from September. The reporter should have two documentation URLs. And I feel like we talked about this at the last meeting where when you're in the reporter, you can have a URL in the template itself. I have no idea, and you can see it in the folder and you can have it in the email output and when you're uh, creating the report. Um, but I think Jennifer is proposing having one in the template and then a different, the option to have a different URL for when the report is the output. So I guess the option to have multiple. So like, here's how you run it. And then here's what you do with it. Do, do a lot of people use the URL? I think we only use it for our um, weeding report. That mm -hmm. links to our documentation about the whole weeding process, but I don't think we use it otherwise, as far as I know. Okay. But yeah. I'm sure it'd be really helpful <laughs> to include yeah. you know, more links to documentation mm -hmm. and um, yeah, how to run it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've used it for somewhere if we felt that it was like, especially for like our annual report for like the state. We have a whole set of templates that have documentation with like, for people who maybe don't run reports only, but this one time of the year. So we have like step-by-step -step instructions for each report template, but for the most part, we don't, we don't use them. But I think the option to have it would be good because there are a few times where I was like, if I could stick a link on like, how to, how to like do a pivot table if you didn't use it when you set up the report or like stuff like that, that might be helpful. Hey, I'm good, I'm good, Jim, how are you? Okay. And then, okay, uh, that one does, yeah. that one does need to be confirmed. So if anyone wants here. to confirm that one. And then uh, I think uh, the last one is uh, the ability okay. to use relative dates for future dates. And, and um, I think Stephanie was, and I were just talking about that. <laughs> yes, we were talking about this before everyone else joined. Um, this is in the new oh, version it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. it's not beautiful yeah. um there's no fabulous ui that uh lets you do this but if you enter negative numbers into your relative dates it pushes the thing out into the future cool very fun we would appreciate oh, more testing on that when we get a community branch out but um it seems to work yeah, and Andrea noted that. So that's really cool. Pretty exciting. <laughs> when we are not slammed with deadlines, I'm going to go back and see if I can change the inputs and the buttons to make it clearer what's happening when you either, like, change them when you've entered a negative number to say, hey, this is in the future now, or make a better UI for choosing future dates, something, I don't know. Right now it, it doesn't change and it still says like weeks ago or months ago or whatever. And then you've entered a negative one. It's actually in the future, but we just um, have not had time to do that because of other pressing bugs and it, other issues. And it's not simple because that relative date thing is like 12 conditions in a trench coat. It's, it's a mess. <laughs> 
Great. Um, well, that's exciting though that you have it kind of working. So that's promising. <laughs> um, that those were the only ones I found in the reporter. Um, okay, Melissa did have a question. Does anyone have a report that shows patron addresses? or patron phone numbers that have been updated during a specific time frame. Ooh, that is an interesting one. Hmm. Does anyone have one or have tried to do this? That is interesting. kind of want it <laughs> I don't is there a way to do it so that you can get like patron e account edits I know there's a last edit date but I don't know if you can see yeah what was edited specifically that's what I was wondering I don't I don't know if it's granular enough to tell you whether it was the address that was edited or whether it's just there was a change made to this patron record. Yeah, yeah last record update. And there's not, it doesn't keep the info that you updated it from. So it's not like you can run two side by side. Okay, so the use cases that they put books in a locker, but don't have the API connection yet. In the meantime, they're manually enter patrons, but when we don't know when the account has changed. Hmm. Yes, definitely something to ponder. <laughs> okay. Good to know, Beth. So I guess, how often do you update the lockers for patron accounts? Is it like you do it monthly or? So it's it's not like a set time. It's more, um, well, when a hold comes in, we enter that patron into the locker system at that point mm -hmm. and then they're in there. So then they get another hold you know, a month later and they're already in the system, but maybe within that month they changed their phone number, but we wouldn't mm -hmm. know because they're saved on that. I mean, the API connection will be the, our, <laughs> our overall yeah. solution, but we're using package Nexus and we've had some other issues. So we weren't sure if we should make an API connection, another issue to have yet, but I think that'll be our overall solution. But in the meantime, we thought if there was a way to see just patrons who had had their addresses updated. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so I guess the record last update time is your only real indicator, but you won't know what okay. updated. Because that would, would that trigger, like even if they check out a book or would it only trigger if, like is an account marked as updated? if it's used or if it just something in the account has changed. Oh, that's right. Um, I think it's just if something in the account has changed. I don't think it will change if there's a circulation or, or anything. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I definitely probably have to look at that again. But yeah, I'm pretty sure um, it's just, yeah, the actual information, the patron record changes. Okay, so I'll give that a try and see. So it's this date. 
not this date. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I always get these two mixed up. <laughs> so, and like last activity could be anything. But not always a login. So, okay. Awesome. Well, if you do get it running, please let us know, because that would be very interesting. <laughs> I'm sure um, some people would like that, especially if they have like uh, donor software that they use. I need to update addresses for patrons. <clears throat> Are there any other questions or topics that you folks would like to discuss? Otherwise, we could wrap up early. Or have ideas for future sessions because we have uh, October's meeting to consider. This is harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> Coming up with topics is so hard. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not alone because yeah, for the permissions one, I'm always like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it really to do. Yeah. There's just so much stuff. It's hard to pick it. I appreciate it. I mean, even just going through the bugs, I think that's nice just to see the ones that are out there and 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 simple things we can do to help, like, you know, going mm -hmm. in and just saying, oh, somebody market confirmed. Um, mm -hmm. That seems helpful to me. Oh, good. <laughs> good. So <clears throat> I guess I have a question. Has there ever been... Um, we would really like it if we could lock templates that are shared so people can't run reports off them. Is that, has that been discussed? No, but I would love that. <laughs> I feel like there's a bug for that. Or is there? If not, I would love to file one. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it would be a lot, pretty long standing request because we have all these old templates that we've pulled and they're not accessible, but we can't actually get rid of them because mm -hmm. people have run stuff off them. So if you try to search for templates, they yeah. get in people's way. <laughs> they do. I feel like there is a bug about that of, you know, the ability to delete, even if there are output, outputs, because that is very frustrating. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I would have to look. I'm not the best uh, launch pad searcher. So if anyone knows of it, um, Sorry, I don't mean to have silence, but let's see. Oh, make option to allow not running. Yeah, that one. Yeah, <laughs> it's been around since 3.3.6. Oh, and that's so funny because this the person who reported it works at Pales or worked at Pales. <laughs> so we, we kind of. I filed it. Yes, but this would be delightful. Okay. And there has been some significant conversation on it. So um, I would add more heat to it and any other work um, workflow ideas or reasons why you would want it. Um, yeah, because we have a lot of uh, XUL templates, and I would love to get rid of those, and it's been very hard, so. Thank you. I will add it to the notes. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, 
Um, actually, I was wondering, and this might be something we could talk about in October. Um, I know the BC Co-op does like a privacy waiver, and I'm wondering if anyone has ever done a permissions certification program from their reports um, permissions, or are all of your reports permissions bundled with other staff permission groups? Um, so just something to think about if you're if you do that or if you have them separated out. I'd be curious to know more about it. Yeah, I would like to know more about the waiver too. I remember that being brought up at the conference and we, yeah, we all thought that was really interesting and something that we should definitely look at. Um, mostly our reports permissions are grouped um, with, it's our, our library manager and local admin have them and then the local admin can assign them individually to certain people or certain staff members. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we've been trying to think of ways to really and I, I like the idea of a certification too. Um, we have training, but nothing that is required. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I can reach out to Jennifer. Um, I wasn't sure if any, if any other consortia were doing similar things, but currently ours are all kind of, everyone can look at reports, but only certain permission groups can run them. And then only certain permission groups can build templates. Um, and we're just trying to be a little bit more mindful of like PII concerns. So while everyone should be able to look at a CERC report, maybe not everyone should be able to look at um, a patron report or something like that. So I don't think the granularity is there just yet, but that would be really cool too. I think I would really appreciate more discussion about this in October because we haven't worked on this at all and mm -hmm. all of our users can do all of those things in reports <laughs> so <laughs> i think maybe maybe some sort of um definition would be good <laughs> oh great okay great well then let me do that we'll do that in october um we can kind of just have a we can i can ask jennifer if she's able to join us uh to talk about the privacy waiver and if not, we can just have a general conversation about um, what everyone is doing in terms of uh, reports, permissions, and, and or training or things like that. Great. Thank you. Uh, anything else before we wrap up for the day? A little early, but. customary 10 minutes, seconds of silence. <laughs> Great. Okay. Great. Well, hearing none, uh, we'll wrap up for today. And then please be on look, look out for um, next month's meeting. And if you have anything in the meantime or know of another consortium that do um, some interesting things with their permissions, just let me know and I can reach out to them and see if they could come and share uh, more info. All right. Thanks so much. Have a good October rest of yes, October. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what day it is. <laughs> Hi everyone.